All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for um, joining us today for the 2020 LD4 conference on link data and libraries. My name is Eric Radio, and I'm moderating the infrastructure track. Before I get started, just want to um, point you to a couple of important links. Uh, the conference schedule is listed here. This conference is going for um, quite a few more days, so please continue to engage and uh, attend presentations. Uh, more information is also on the conference website. You can also interact with the conference via Twitter, um, if that's your mode of communication. Um, but we also have a Slack channel specifically for this um, particular track. So I'd encourage you to do, participate in the discussion there, especially if questions come to mind after the presentation. And then finally, uh, the community participation guidelines are listed there. Please take a look at those as you are able. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Andrew Pace and John Chapman from OCLC to talk about their work in linked data at OCLC. I'm assuming everyone can see my screen at this point. <laughs> um, thanks, everyone. My name is Andrew Pace. I'm the Executive Director of Technical Research at OCLC, uh, which means I manage a team of research scientists, data scientists, engineers, and architects trying to advance the state of the art of many library technologies, uh, including linked data. And I'll be joined later uh, in this presentation by my colleague from uh, Global Product Management, uh, John Chapman. Uh, we're excited by this opportunity to talk to you uh, about what OCLC has done uh, over the last decade. Uh, and I'll do that first and then turn things over to John to talk about some exciting future activities. I'm going to spend, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on what linked data is, uh, as those resources for getting started with linked data are quite numerous and have been addressed by others in this conference. Uh, and I will speak only briefly on the why of linked data in hopes that we're preaching primarily to the converted or at least to a large group of the cautiously optimistic. I'll speak generally about some good habits for successful research, and then I'll present details of a decade long story arc of linked data research and some of the lessons that we've learned. One way to look at linked data is through its technical definition. Uh, a set of best practices for publishing data on the web that is interlinked with other data on the web to allow for more useful semantic queries. But for many, that may be either incomprehensible in one extreme or superficial in the other. So another way to look at it is through the question, why linked data? And the answer to that question is because it helps connect data. And through this process, you can connect isolated systems and services, which allows them to better connect people to libraries and libraries to each other. The how for OCLC has been a combination of principles, most of which we tried to apply to each effort that I'll talk about in our timeline. Our research team, team has, a, has limited resources, so we want to ensure that we're picking projects that will advance the state of the art will generate knowledge, evidence, and models, and will activate the communities of practice that help libraries plan with confidence, position with effect, and make an impact. With each project, we endeavor to create first a vision statement. We set out uh, where we set out what we want to prove or disprove. Second, we all have bosses and stakeholders in our organizations. So we'll often create a quick business lean canvas for the project that will determine uh, both the level of effort and the impact on the market or the ecosystem in which we're working. Third, but probably most important in this list, we want to find good library partners. We're grateful for the OCLC Research Library Partnership and others with whom we, we can engage. And next, in those partnerships, we have high expectations of participation in our research process. We also expect candor. And we actually hope that those co-development partnerships lead us in new directions and not simply fulfill any preconceived notions or hypotheses. As an R&D activity, we've also found it helpful to make distinctions between prototypes and pilot timelines and efforts to create production services. Setting an end date to an experiment keeps those lines from blurring and it also keeps small scale research projects from becoming accidental production services. And finally, as much as we can, we try to publish and present our findings as we go along. A link on the next slide will lead you to many wonderful artifacts and outputs from OCLC research. As I mentioned, OCLC has been in this game a long time, uh, over a decade. And over that time, we've 
uh, we have learned a great deal about what is needed to do linked data at scale. I'm going to review this history as an iterative and cumulative timeline leading to our current state, which my colleague John will describe. If you want the dance mix version of this presentation, I encourage you to follow the link at the top of the screen where you'll find even more details on all of OCLC's linked data research, including getting started guides and more presentations uh, that you couldn't possibly watch in one sitting. So way back in 2009, about a year after I arrived at OCLC, my colleagues in research and on the technology teams were hard at work learning about what it meant to publish linked data on the web through converting and publishing FAST, VOF, and in 2012, all of the worldcat.org structured, uh, structured linked data. I've spelled out VOF and FAST here for the uninitiated, and I'm hoping that WorldCat doesn't require too much explanation, but just in case, it's OCLC's comprehensive database of library holdings, not including articles in its central index, we're talking about roughly 482 million bibliographic records with nearly 3 billion, with a B, library holdings. Uh, a record is added to WorldCat about every two seconds. One lesson learned from this in hindsight and with the benefit of these wonderful LD4 meetings that we've been having over the last couple of years uh, is that it's hard to find a linked data and libraries project that doesn't make some use of either the data itself or the models that emerge from some of this early work with FAST, VOF, and WorldCat. After that series of initial work, we started to investigate the use cases for linked data. The Entity JS project evaluated end user discovery uses of linked data. It was a prototype to test WorldCat linked data for exploratory searching. We took WorldCat linked data for creative works associated with topics and built new indexes for entries, including people, organizations, places, events, topics, and works that were then presented in that data. We examined those entity relationships and built a UI to search the indexes. The key findings were that co-occurrences of those entities mentioned in the descriptive and creative works shows important relationships and aggregation adds a lot of value. Going beyond end user use cases, the person lookup pilot investigated how to make linked data accessible from other library systems. Our findings would prove important for later work. First, that no single source is good at everything and quality varies by element type. Second, aggregating a lot of data creates context at scale. We also realized that weighting and scoring of search results is crucial to effective interfaces and workflows. And supporting workflows efficiently means rethinking identity creation, for example, and ID creation. For example, context is key for disambiguating names and language support is important, but labor intensive and inexact. In 2015, we experimented with workflows and processes to create linked data from scratch. We focused on how to balance the web scale networking and computing power of OCLC with the absolutely necessarily human interaction of data domain experts, a necessity that was shown by working with special collections. The Entity JS experiment proved inadequate for content DM data due to the lossy transition in normalizing data to Dublin Core and Mark. We also discovered that mapping to a common schema required a lot of local domain knowledge of the collections and associated metadata. So we asked ourselves if we could create an application that would help libraries with the mapping and creation of linked data entities for special collections. Again, we found that aggregation adds tremendous value. We also learned that while it's possible to centralize the web applications for linked data work, these new models must support decentralized expertise in its cleanup, mapping, connecting of linked data entities, especially for special collections materials. By 2017, we were in a position where we had studied the various components of doing linked data at scale, creation, publication, and, and use, but we had not yet looked at the problem holistically to determine how all of these components could be combined to allow for linked data curation. Project Passage used the Wikibase platform to evaluate how users could effectively create, edit, publish, and use linked data for authority metadata, all within a single unified system. It would take many slides to do this project justice. So instead, I would urge you to take a close look at the accompanying report written by both OCLC staff and several of the library participants and published by OCLC Research in 2018. 
but it is worth a little time, uh, I, the little time I have left to quickly review some of those key findings. Wikibase, we found, can be used to create structured data with a precision that does exceed current library standards. This is the hope I think that many of us have been, have been looking for in linked data models. The platform enables user-driven ontology design, but raises concerns about how to manage and maintain ontologies. One of the things that we found is that Wikibase allows for constraint, but doesn't require them. The, pl the platform supplemented with OCLC's enhancements and standalone utilities did enable librarians to see the results of their efforts in discovery interface without leaving the metadata creation workflow. It's important to note that this effort included the creation of some custom applications and that the out of the box applications that come with Wikibase were not always adequate to support cataloger workflows. Robust tools are required for local data management, again, uh, highlighting the need to create uh, custom tools. To populate knowledge graphs with library metadata tools that facilitate the import and enhancement of data created elsewhere are also recommended. The pilot underscored the need for interoperability between data sources, both for ingest and export. And finally, the traditional distinction that we've seen between authority and bibliographic data can disappear in linked data description. Lastly, before I turn things over to John for a glimpse of future state of OCLC, the Content DM experiment took a look back at the refinery project and applying the lessons that we learned from Project Passage in evaluating how these principles apply to cultural heritage materials. Our colleague Jeff Mixter will be covering this topic as well as our IIIF endeavors uh, with cultural heritage collections and an LD4 presentation that is scheduled for the end of this month, I believe on July 29th. All of these efforts that I've given a very quick uh, overview of have culminated in our biggest effort to date, which I will let my colleague John Chapman, the leader of that effort, explain. John? Yes, thanks, Andrew. All right, can everyone see my screen? Great. I've, um, I've borrowed uh, Andrew's structure a little bit here in terms of looking at our project goals and our, and our findings so far uh, with this project. But um, in addition to the lessons learned uh, from the um, passage project that Andrew shared with you, we also heard a lot about the role, um, the, the role that the passage participants uh, wanted large uh, data infrastructure players uh, to play in this um, overall linked data ecosystem. So they identified some infrastructure needs um, as part of some surveys and interviews that we did um, along with the uh, interviews that we did for the report that Andrew mentioned. And they mentioned um, several areas uh, that needed that sort of centralized infrastructure work. Um, the first was really to provide tools that expanded on that idea of native metadata management. So in other words, um, many libraries would want to have control over their own tool set. Other libraries would want a centralized tool set that allows them to work with linked data in a native format. They also saw a role uh, for infrastructure providers to do um, heavy cross-linking of library data to non-library data sources, and also to start working on um, this issue about um, community data, high level contextual data, and then how that is linked to or how that links um, to locally, hold, lo locally uh, held metadata. We also have heard a lot about the need to provide identifier creation services at the point of need. So this would be an example of uh, wanting to mint a new identifier um, for something as you're working on it and have that be made immediately visible to other users on the network instead of having a process that might um, take days or weeks in order to get a new heading, for example. We also heard loud and clear the need for providers to stand behind their URIs, to persist those, and to stand up um, you know, high level infrastructure with good SLAs, good response time, and, and all of that. Um, also importantly, uh, we needed this to really operate at, at a big scale and be sustainable. So 
Um, as many of you know, um, this project is funded through a Mellon grant and the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation was um, very adamant, um, making sure that we uh, planned for after the money ran out. So after the two year grant phase, um, how is this project and how is this system sustained? Um, the, another goal of the project is to complement other linked data efforts, um, including the LD4P grants, and really to uh, provide centralized infrastructure so that linked data work that's being done by groups or consortia can share a common infrastructure. So um, as I mentioned, this is a 24 month project um, and we've divided it up into uh, six month increments um, and uh, we're actually at that at the first one right now. Um, the project is planning to leverage Wikibase for at least the first half. Um, we have a architectural recommendation that is due at the end of that first year at the 12 month mark. Um, to say whether we're going to continue on a primarily Wikibase platform, whether we're going to move to a hybrid approach, or whether we're going to move to some other um, backend system. Uh, the project also has multiple communication channels for input and, and iteration. I'll talk about that um, in a little bit. Um, the project uh, spans multiple divisions within OCLC. Um, in addition to staff from my team uh, in our product group and Andrew's team, which is in technical research, uh, we've got um, our engineering staff, our developers, uh, user experience research folks, architects, systems folks. So it's really pulling together um, a number of groups that are used to working together, but it's nice to have it kind of baked into some of the regular processes that we have within the company to ensure quality. And the way that we've done planning and um, manage things like JIRAs and bugs are through uh, coherent teams that are working on, on part of the project. So for example, we have a data quality uh, work stream, we have a communication work stream, we have a development work stream. And so those represent coherent teams that are tracking their issues and working against those. Um, so in January, um, we announced the grant. Um, all of you who are familiar with the, with the Mellon uh, funding know that it's an awful tight turnaround between learning that you got the grant and the money being in the bank. So we, um, we found out in late December, um, got the money in early January and had our staff um, hands on keyboards, as they say, uh, January 6th, and then uh, put out this announcement January 9th. Um, so essentially, uh, this recaps some of what I mentioned before. Um, I wanted to pull out one quote from it, though, which is a quote from uh, Lorcan, and I think it does a good job highlighting the, the focus of the project. So really what we're doing here is building infrastructure and talking about providing reliable and persistent infrastructure um, to, provide to provide identifiers and provide contextual metadata and this project is really a infrastructure project. Um, I'll talk a little bit about UIs, um, but this is primarily an API and a data project. Um, the communication channels I, I mentioned before, um, we have lots of ad hoc um, discussions with libraries and, and with groups. We have a formal uh, PCC liaison, uh, Zhao Li Li. Um, we're also uh, doing presentations and reports, both internal and external, um, fairly often on the project, um, presentations like this one. Um, we also have an ongoing channel open with um, LD4P, so with the, with the grant managers to make sure that as we look ahead, uh, the two projects are aware of where each other are going and are looking for opportunities to, to mesh together. We also have an entity management advisory group, which advises this project. Um, it's a combination of some libraries that participated in Project Passage, but with the addition of many more libraries, um, a stronger international participation, and um, I'll, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. Um, we meet monthly. Uh, we also do have some breakouts and some focus groups that meet separately, um, you know, the, the group is large enough that a, a 
an everybody discussion doesn't always get the right level of participation. So increasingly, we're going to break out into you know ten person or so groups and and talk about some issues. Um, and then at those uh, six month increments, we take uh, a few weeks out to do testing. And so a subset of the advisory group has volunteered to do that. Um, and we're right in the midst of that um, as we speak. So our, our testing phase ends um, on the 17th. So the advisory group uh, consists of 24 different libraries. We have multiple participants from nearly all of them. Um, and I'm excited that they do represent a, a broad, um, a broad array of types of libraries, I guess I would say. So we have um, the oldest university in the world, the University of Bologna. We've got, um, we've got small um, to medium academic libraries. We've got public libraries. We have state universities. We have private research libraries and we have national libraries. So it's a very, um, very big group. Um, it's, it covers so many time zones. I believe it's 18. Um, that we do split our, our formal meetings up into two to make sure that everybody has a chance for, for live discussion. So, as I mentioned, uh, we're currently in the testing phase for that first increment. Um, it really just goes over basic uh, functionality. It's getting our feet wet, you know, is this thing on type testing. Um, it covers both the API and, and the UI. The UI at this point is basically a stripped down Wikibase UI, um, which we'll be continuing to evaluate and, and work on at least for this first, uh, first half of the project, as I mentioned. We're also shaking out our process and our procedures and our cadence for testing. So uh, we have some API testing um, going on, which relies on the software Postman. Um, our UI testing has some kind of more formal tools for um, evaluating the user interface. Um, and so, you know, soon we'll, we'll, we'll recap the testing and the results of it, but we'll also be looking at that process and making sure um, we improve on our, our, our testing as well. Um, the findings so far, um, you know, early on it became very apparent that we do have to um, have a focus and we are focusing on creative works and on persons. Uh, we feel like these are in OCLC's wheelhouse and are things that um, libraries expect us to provide. Um, another, um, and this is maybe a bit of a cliche at this point, um, you know, talking about the impact of COVID on, on communications, but internal communication, even in healthy times, does take a lot of effort. Um, this project pulls together, as I said, multiple folks from multiple teams, um, some new employees, um, some folks who have been there 35 years. And so um, that has uh, taken some time to spin up that team and get them work, working well together. Uh, but with COVID, ha we, we can't quite have those casual uh, hallway conversations and kind of, you know, keeping your ears open for things that we're, that we're used to. Um, so that's been something that, um, as the grant manager, I've been um, paying attention to and just trying to see how we can replicate at least some of that. And the last one is that scaling is a challenge. So we have ambitious goals as for size. Um, and the, the, the uh, Wikibase software was built around a project that grew fairly organically. Um, here we're trying to, you know, pump a lot of data into it in a short time. And um, we're, you know, we're definitely testing some limits on that. So that's been a, uh, been a technical challenge that our group is wrestling with. So um, just to recap and sort of wrap up the presentation, I wanted to um, take a really quick spin through our, our timeline here and talk about sort of the takeaways from each project. And so, you know, 10 years ago with VOF and FAST and also WorldCat, that was really about publishing linked data on the web with UIs, with an API and with downloadable data. Then we moved towards, you know, exploring how linked data maximizes discovery. Um, and using that sort of bento box interface to, to, to traverse those connections between different entities. Next, uh, you know, we, we test uh, use cases and client interoperability for linked data, focusing on providing web services. And then with the content DM metadata refinery, we evaluated 
shared tools. So really looking at how librarians could work with linked data, take control of that quality aspect of linked data. Building on that, we, we sought to put a lot of that together and build a complete system based on linked data. So some data ingest, some data creation, uh, data visualization, uh, data import, all sorts of different tools put together into as light a weight um, an environment as we could put together to see how the workflows change, to see what impact that had on metadata creation of linked data as linked data, not just converting it from record-based data. And then with the Content DM linked data pilot, also building on Wikibase, we focused on the long tail. So attending to issues that are around rare, local, and unique materials, looking at cultural materials, looking at what changes when we're talking about entities that may not be very famous, commonly known, uh, well-connected, whether those are people, places, creative works, or, or anything else. And then with the current project, it's really pulling together our experience based on all of these past projects to build our production uh, data and production services and do that globally. So um, I'm very excited uh, for the future. We're, as I said, a quarter of the way through the project um, and things are going well. And um, we have a little bit of time left, um, Eric, for questions, I think. Yep, we do. Thanks so much for that very interesting presentation. Um, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. We have a couple there right now. The first one is, since the Shared Entity Project is uh, Mellon Grant funded, is it also an open source project? And can you provide a link to the source code repository? Yeah, so the, um, the project is not, um, the software is not being released open source. Um, what we've committed to doing is sharing information about the data model uh, for the data that we'll be publishing. Uh, but we um, have not committed it as an open source software project. And then sort of a related one is, are you sharing the tools being considered created for your Wikibase with the wider Wikibase Wikidata community? So um, we don't know what tools yet may or may not be created as part of this project. Um, as part of the uh, project passage that Andrew described, there were two major applications that were built on the Wikibase platform, um, the Retriever and the Explorer. Uh, which were an import and uh, discovery visualization tool. Um, Bruce Washburn, I believe, who's the um, engineer for those, has published technical documentation. It is not uh, formal source code, but he's, um, he's written those up, and those are available. Um, Andrew and I can check to make sure that a, a link is provided or included somewhere uh, for reference. Great, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? minutes. John, maybe advance the slide to show our contact information. Oh, great idea. Yes, thank you. So the, that's our contact info. I um, want to thank LD4 for the, um, for the invitation. I'm sorry that we're not there with you all in person. It was a fun conference last year. Um, but uh, feel free to get in touch. And um, we look forward to hearing from you. Great, thanks, John. And one question did just come in. Um, subject headings may prove to be the most difficult to provide identifiers for, at least for string-based systems. Um, will you or how will you be thinking about that in the future? I missed the first word of that, Eric. Oh, yeah, sure, sorry. Subject headings? Oh, yeah. So um, we aren't looking to, at this point, to uh, you know create any sort of like concept entity or, or, or anything like that. We are looking to rely on existing um, topical headings. Um, one of the reasons why we're interested in FAST is to actually pull out information where people as subjects um, can, can help us kind of triangulate some things. But we aren't at this point, and it's recognizing the extreme difficulty across you know, languages and cultures, uh, we aren't planning to do any sort of concept entity at this point. And we, we have begun, you know, that I think John's speaking primarily to semi, we have done um, some additional research in terms of um, what we can do with the fast headings, um, look, looking at sort of, you know, some of the, you know, what would those entities look like 
Um, but again, there, that's just in the in the early stages, while the while the infrastructure uh, for uh, what John has talked about is being set up. Early days on subjects. Yeah, that's a really tough problem. Um, another question is: Without the concept areas, how are you planning on disambiguating with context? So we feel like creative works can be disambiguated with a, with a number of different things um, outside of um, concept entities that we hosted. Um, so we believe that connections to external sources, to literals like dates, um, to entities like authors and publishers um, can do that. Um, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but I think that um, we'll actually have a little bit more flexibility if we're not um, trying to set up our own uh, concept scheme as part of this project. Great, thanks. Um, and one more question. Uh, I'm not, uh, will you be providing for script identification? Yes, that's actually one of the, um, one of the big benefits um, that we've seen so far in our experiments with uh, Wikibase and the Wikimedia platform is their um, language and character support. Um, so that's something that we'll be exploring. We've got a lot of internal interest in that at OCLC. Um, you know, it's kind of like a kid in the candy store for some of our staff having wrestled with some of our legacy technology and then being able to use these systems, which deal with it much more gracefully. So that's definitely something we're going to explore. Thank you. Um, I don't believe there are any further questions. So I'd like to thank um, our presenters one more time for this very great presentation. And we'll make this video available as soon as we can. Great. Thank you. Eric. Thanks.